Hi, I'm Rich Colbert, Principal Technology Evangelist for Data Domain. We're here today to talk a little bit about protecting VMware virtual server environments using Data Domain. Now, VMware has been a great benefit and it has a, a tremendous consolidative effect in the data center in terms of reducing the physical footprint of servers. However, this ability to deploy servers quickly and easily has led to a phenomenon known as virtual server sprawl. And if you think about it, that's just the tip of the iceberg because behind each of those virtual servers, now you have lots and lots of images to back up and protect for your normal backup cycle. So one of the interesting things about looking at virtualization and data deduplication together is there's some interesting synergies. There's, some, there's, there's a couple of vectors upon which deduplication is particularly effective when looking at the virtual server problem. If you look at those lines, I'm looking at redundancy and repetition. Because if you think about it, a typical virtual server environment doesn't just have one VM, but it has lots and lots of virtual machines, largely based on the same operating system, built from the same template, perhaps running the same applications. So there's a high level of redundancy from one virtual machine to the next. Then there's repetition, because you're not simply storing one backup of those virtual machines. You're keeping lots and lots of backups online. Uh, you know, perhaps as many as 30 days in order to you know, meet your policies and, and guidelines. So all of these images of all of these virtual machines collectively add up to a very large footprint of data stored. And this is where data deduplication comes in, in terms of helping solve this particular problem. And this is where data domain is particularly effective. Okay, so how do customers typically deploy data domain to protect a VMware environment? And, and the answer is, there's really no one right or correct answer for every environment. Um, to really simplify it, you basically want to take copies of your virtual machine images running on ESX and store them on a data domain system, which is a backup to disk target. But there are different scenarios and different reasons why you'd choose one method over the other, and I'll talk about three of them. Now, customers who are early in their adoption cycle perhaps have deployed ESX uh, maybe for test labs, for development, things like that, and all of a sudden production starts to hit ESX. All of a sudden you start to need to back up a few virtual machines, but you don't have a VMware specific backup infrastructure in place. Well, for those customers, what they're doing is they typically deploy a virtual agent or a backup agent rather directly into the virtual machine and treat it just like any other file server. So what happens is, that virtual machine sends its backup data through a normal ba enterprise backup solution, such as Semantics Net Backup, and that backup software writes data strictly straight to disk. So it's, it's just like you're using your existing backup envi environment today. You're just leveraging the backup infrastructure that exists. You're leveraging the data domain solution that you already have in place. So that's one method. But for some customers, that doesn't scale. And as you start to put more and more production VMs on on your, uh, in your environment, you're going to change things around a little bit. Now, for customers who need the absolute uh, you know, uninterrupted access to ESX, you need uh, you know, no backup windows, you need to be able to do things without disturbing this environment, uh, what they use is VCB. Now, VCB stands for VMware Consolidated Backup. And what it is is the ability to offload the backup process to a VCB proxy server. Now that VCB proxy server can be used by traditional backup software, again, like your back, uh, net backup, backup exec, and so forth. Um, but it can also be used by specialty VMware products, such as Vision Core's VRanger Pro. Um, whichever route you choose, what happens is your backup software now initiates uh, the quiescing of your virtual machines. These sit down here on the SAN. Your VCB proxy then reads those virtual machines without affecting the performance or the availability of the ESX server. And now your VCB proxy is used to write backup images to data domain. All right, so that's a second method. It requires a little bit of infrastructure. It requires a SAN. It requires a VCB proxy. But it absolutely doesn't impact the ESX host while it's running. And it's, it's used for you know, high availability, round the clock types of environments. Now there's a third method that you might use if you're using something like Vision Core's VRanger Pro. And that is to say 
that you want the backup software or the backup solution to be kind of a traffic cop and negotiate all this, but you actually want ESX to write directly to data domain. And that actually can be done. So vRanger Pro initiates a backup, ESX mounts the data domain directly via NFS and stores the backup images on the data domain system. So three different techniques, traditional backup software or specialty product solutions that are designed to backup VMware, but the end result is the same. All of your backup images are copied from your ESX environment and stored on a data domain system. So that's how you get the data onto data domain systems. Now, What's interesting is those three techniques are not mutually exclusive. And some customers are actually running some backup agents for some systems. They might be running VCB for others. And not usually we have three at once, but usually customers will either use one or two of these techniques simultaneously uh, based on the, their requirements, based on the VMs, and, and, and so forth. Now, the final picture, and the thing that kind of completes the VMware story, if you will, is now that you've made all of these VMs smaller on data domain using data deduplication, you can actually replicate them off-site using your existing WAN circuits to another data domain system. And this completes the disaster recovery story. Now, as you know from using VMware, ESX is a very hardware agnostic thing, and so it's positioned as a great disaster recovery solution. Now that you have the ability to electronically move all your VM images off-site in their smallest possible footprint, you've got a complete disaster recovery solution in addition to your local operational recovery. So let's summarize the key benefits of data domain protecting VMware environments. Data domain and VMware together allows you to maximize the data reduction. Huge, huge benefit in terms of actually shrinking the footprint of storing VM backups on disk. You can store lots and lots of backups for a greater period of time than a traditional disk solution. You can use any backup application that's suitable to your environment. You can use a specialty product. You can use traditional backup software. You can use whatever method works best for you or a combination of methods that work best for you. So you have that freedom of choice. You have true data deduplicated offsite replication. The ability to actually take this massive amount of data, shrink it down to a very, very small size, and send it across your existing wide area network circuits and do it quickly. And finally, simple VM recovery. You have the ability to restore your virtual machines both at your local site and offsite for disaster recovery, uh, depending on the situation, uh, you know, using kind of commercial off-the-shelf techniques, whether it's net backup, whether it's vision core, uh, whether it's uh, any other product of your choice, or even your own homemade scripts. All of these solutions work. Data domain gives you the greatest data reduction and the greatest flexibility of choice for protecting your VMware environments. For more information about using data domain in VMware environments, visit our website.